Let's dive into instruments with profiling. There are, there are two ways to start it. Either you click on product and then profile. The second option is that if you click on this button, you see how usually it says run, right? If you if I if you were to click and hold your button, mouse button, then a menu pops up and you can select profile. That's another way. Choose your template from here, a blank template. You can make your own templates, but basically to, to check a template for leaks, activity monitor, automation, system trace, zombies. Now let me warn you, this is a big subject here and a, uh, something for the experts. If you get bogged down here, you won't learn the basics. So I would su uh, suggest you learn the basics first and then gradually progress towards it. And... Um, Let's say we want to check on leaks and uh, I'm going to profile it. It will launch the simulator automatically attached to this app application. And this application was I just click something in the text box, click on the button, it types it up there. And it's collecting your da da data. <coughs> Once you are done, you click on either you can pause so you can do something over here. You don't want it recorded. When you're done, you uh, stop. Now here's the toolbar up there and you know pause, start, stop and other options here you can hide and select show different uh, areas this is uh, this area up here is called the selection uh, selection area or instruments pane you know like uh, which instruments leaks allocation and the one down here is called a uh, selection area you can select you know what you want to look at this is the timeline this is the detail and uh, the, both of them combined are called active area this is the supporting information once you select something here there are more details you see them over here so I'm gonna stop it, it, it stopped recording and see you can see the different things right there you see now you see information here this if there is no information you won't see it object lists these are all the objects and you can see a particular object or things like that here you can uh, select your alloc allocations or the leaks for example, in leaks, there are no leaks, so that's very good. Since iOS, iOS 5, the memory allocation, the allocation is taken by automatically, you know. So that is not a problem anymore. So this tool is not as useful these days. It used to be a big thing to detect memory leaks. So there are a lot of templates and a lot going on in here. It's impossible to cover them and I wouldn't be worried too much about it and use them as you need them. Once you see this screen, you see there's blank. So you have to click on stop. I've already clicked on stop over here. Once you click on stop, you wait for it to reset, then come down here and say create a script. Now this is uh, uh, written in JavaScript, so you can write JavaScript over here for things like you know click a button um, programmatically. But one thing you want to do before you come over here is go back to your user interface and make some changes. Let's do that. So I'm back here again. I'm gonna click my iPad nib and I'm going to try to find it uh, sorry iPhone nib file nib file okay you find this tab right here it's called the Identity Inspector. 
uh, hide some of them so you can see the accessibility and make sure the user interac interaction enabled is checked and they're all checked which is good now we're going to launch that profiler again automation profile comes in here I'm going to click stop create new Now once you have that, you can type in a JavaScript. This editor is not very good and you have to be a really expert and know what you are doing, but you can do things like that just to give you a little flavor. You create a target, you create an app, you create the window, you, you get a list of all the text fields in there, you get a particular text field using its name and set its value, you can create a instance of my button and tap it and th those kind of things and then you can run that script over and over again and it will uh, do repetitive chores easy for you so that would be a, spe a stuff for somebody who wants to be a quality assurance specialist or become very very specialized in this area and it's you know as you know that this is about Xcode Objective C and Coco Touch programming and now this is another we are branching off totally into a different area but for you here's a little uh, flavor for you of what you can do it's quite advanced and very f interesting and awesome thanks on behalf of Tibana Software Training and Consulting see you next time so at this point I feel that uh, I have covered Xcode enough in enough detail to start lear learning Objective-C so the next track is going to be Objective-C Part 1 uh, from me. It's going to be different and unique because most people want to learn Objective-C because they want to write applications for iPhone, not console applications or this or that. So we're gonna, I'm going to be teaching Objective-C in the context of uh, writing an iPhone application, make a small iPhone application, perhaps put a button on it, click on a button, then you know it'll go through the if statement selection statements how to declare variables how to create classes and use them and the third track is going to be Coco touch so see you next time in objective c part one